Let's have a closer look at the new Mercedes W13 and its genius little tricks. For those who are new to my channel, I'm Martin. I've been working for Audi in Germany in various departments of their technical development for 7 years. I moved to the UK and worked for McLaren, Force India and Racing Point in the years 2017, 18, 19 and 20 in their aerodynamics departments. And today I'm a self-employed motorsport consultant. And now back to the Mercedes. Let's start at the front. Mercedes uses a 4 element front wing with a long nose and without detached first element, like the Ferrari. The front wing generates most of the downforce at the sides and is backed off in the center to send more energy to the floor. Also here we see the adjustment at the far outside and the inboard step change will create a vortex either side which can be used further downstream. The end plates look like they are bent outside which could help to avoid separations while turning, a detail we haven't seen at other cars yet. The bodywork is impressive, not just because of the tight packaging but also because of their weight control. Similar to Haas and Alfa Tauri, the W13 uses wide side pods first and has a bluff surface to push the wake outside like the Aston Martin. But additionally, Mercedes pulled a genius trick that other cars didn't have yet. They extended the outwashing surface with the rear mirror stay. How can they get away with that? I think we can all agree that this tiny vertical stay doesn't do much. But because of this connection, the part can be declared as rear mirror stay. If we check article 364c, it says that the bodywork declared as rear mirror stay can only be as wide as the mirror itself, should only be a single section, can be up to 50 mm high, and shouldn't be further than 1300 mm away from the front wheel center line. Mercedes seem to tick all those boxes, so it's a nice little detail that will help a lot with outwash, and which will be copied by other teams quite quickly. Mercedes uses the bodywork first to push the tire wake outside and, at the same time, creates a strong downwash. That's basically replacing the tire wake in its previous position and helps to keep it outside. So, if we want to categorize this bodywork, it's hard. Because the forward concept is pushing the wake outside with bodywork like Aston Martin and Alfa Romeo and the rear is super tight like McLaren and Williams. But the main concept here is to create downwash and to pull clean air down from above. So it's a downwashing bodywork, but with elements of all three categories. Also very interesting is the floor entry with its two different heights. The inside is high, the outside much lower and provides a strong airflow on top of the floor to the wobbly vortex generators that help to seal the floor. The floor has a two-step design, similar to the Aston Martin, which uses the same wind tunnel. The beam wing has two elements and is very aggressive. This, on the other hand, supports the rear wing right above it and allows to lower the leading edge, which increases the camber angle and hands downforce. The support in the center isn't that strong, because the exhaust pipe is in the way, and so the center has a higher leading edge. Let's talk about some details here. The panel at the sides allows for a quick change to louvres if they should need them. The little blisters in the cockpit help to reduce the cockpit losses. The rear wing flap has a pretty sharp convex curvature on the pressure side, which could help to separate the upper side and shadow the gurney flap when DRS is open. Concave curvature is regulated here, convex isn't. Mercedes used their mini rakes in crucial areas at the first runs. They do this to see how much energy the air in these areas has and correlate the data with their CFD. We see the rakes in the top intake, behind the driver helmet, on top of the floor leading edge and in the coke area. So far it's the first time we can see rakes on a car, so Mercedes collected that data already. All in all we can say that Mercedes did their homework. They came up with a design that is not too extreme and has elements of all three concepts we've seen so far. Impressive is that Mercedes turns up with a car with so many detailed designs and clever solutions that it looks like this car is already pretty far in development. Let me know how you like the new Mercedes W13 in the comments below and see you at the next video.